Hey guys, this is Production Music Live and today we will write some nice chord progression and melody for future bass. By the way, this is the template we made. Check out the link in the description. This is my MIDI channel here where I will uh, draw in the MIDI information and those four massives here, one, two, three, four, um, are playing actually then the sound. What you have to do is, normally it's on all ins, but this time you're choosing another input, like in this case MIDI Thins Chords, I, I called it MIDI Thins Chords. What you have to do is set this on in and that's all you have to do. So I don't have to copy the MIDI clip to all those uh, synths and uh, we have a nice uh, sound playing. So those are the drums. Um, Check out the link in the description for those one as well. So Future Bass is a really interesting kind of style. You can use a wide range of sounds. You can be really creative with your drum rhythm and melody rhythm and stuff. And of course you can be really creative with your chords and melody. For Future Bass you're using more sophisticated chord progression and chords and voicings. So like we told you in other tutorials, a good chord progression has always some tension and some release. Even uh, the melody has some tension and release. In Future Bass you have like more tension, you're building up more tension, you're, you're holding the tension longer than you do in uh, other kinds of uh, styles. Today we will uh, compose our chord progression and s song in a major scale and and we are taking the C major scale because of uh, visual purposes again. Last time we took the A minor scale and you might remember A minor is using all the white notes on your keyboard. Starting from A, the C major scale is using all the white notes as well but starting from a different root note, we call it root note. So it starts from C goes to D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. This is one octave and this is your root note and this is your root note as well, just an octave higher. And to all those notes in your scale there are uh, according chord. So for example, if we want to make a chord out of the C in a C major scale, we end up with C major and then we will build a D minor for example. So, and how you come up with these chords? Well, if you know your scale, it's actually pretty simple. You just use the root, for example, the C, then you take the second, third degree, fourth and fifth degree, and this makes it a chord. Root, third and fifth, and here as well. So, one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, there's already a difference between those uh, two chords. As you can see, the, the third here is one half tone lower than it is on the C major scale. So this is a major chord, we call it a major chord, and this is a minor chord. This is C major, E minor. The code for a major scale is a major third and a minor third. So here from C to E we have a major third, and from E to G we have a minor third and here it's the other way around. We have from D to F we have a um, minor third and a major third to the A from F to A. And so on you can build your chords if you know your scale. So if you want to learn more about chord progression I recommend you uh, our course about harmony and chord progression. Check out the link in the description. So in previous tutorials I told you it's always good to start with your root chord, but in this case we will, uh, we will start differently because in future bass we have longer periods of tension in our chord progression. So we will start right away um, not with the root chord but with something different. So we start with an F a major chord. Here I'm playing the bass note and then I'm going F a and C and this sounds like that. Okay, so this would be a basic uh, F major chord. We are going to make it 
uh, more interesting right away. So what we are doing is we are taking the F3 uh, here as well and then we are adding this uh, G here and, and making an F major add two chord out of it. it sounds like this. Um, already quite interesting and why is it an F major at two chord? Well, we have, so our root note in this case is F and our scale is the C major scale. So we go one, two, three, our third, four, five, our fifth, six, seven, one. And then again, one, two, to give it even more tension, we could just take this F and move it up to a G as well. So it's still a G, an, an F major at two chord, but a little different. Uh, let's listen in. And this is somehow more interesting or richer. So let's um, progress we could um, go down the scale here and uh, making a D minor chord. Let's take the C here as well. So like I told you in previous tutorials, it's always nice to have some notes playing across the whole chord progression or at least in the following chord. Um, maybe we can add here another, another F up here. And let's add another A. So what we are using is just an D, an F, an A which are our basic uh, notes of the chord. And then we added some C in there, which makes it a D major seven chord. And then we are just stacking the notes again, like the D, F and A. Here's the same like we, we have down there. Wait, uh, well, we started like here. So. Maybe we're deleting this here. So now I have something in mind. Let's drop in the next chord a little bit earlier than normally. So and we, we're taking the E and making it an E minor chord. Sounds like this. So and then what we are doing is we're going finally back to our root chord and releasing a little bit. So we want to have some release here and there. Um, so we're making a basic C major chord here and we might voice it up differently later. So let's listen in. Okay, cool. We have our first part and let's add some tension here as well. So we had an, uh, we said we had an E minor chord, consists of the note E, G and B. We had a minor third, major third, and we could make it a seventh chord, which would be pretty nice because it's the same note than uh, before. Okay, and let's um, let's progress with our top melody here. So you have to keep in mind that uh, our ears are really sensitive to the highest note in your progression and the lowest uh, notes or the bass notes. So you should always take attention what note it's um, is playing on the top. And for now, we would have like. And if we're adding here this E. This would already be a possibility, um, but why not, for example, playing this B. So this B is uh, part of our uh, basic chord, the E minor, E, 
G and B. And so we are progressing with our top melody and we're going upstairs. For example, I don't like this uh, down here, I'm, so I move it up. And um, what we can do as well is, is maybe um, we are deleting this note here and this one as well. So let's listen in. So uh, somehow this is not building an enough tension here before it releasing. So we could add here an E. As you can see, this E is inside of the C major chord. Uh, so C, E and G is uh, the C major chord. So this should be a nice uh, progression here to the C. So okay, let's move on and uh, for the second part we are starting uh, with this F major 7 chord again. So but now let's do some changes here. Uh, for example with our top note we can move uh, this up, for example to an A, a would fit really nice because F, A and C makes the F major chord. <laughs> R and C. Now we are doing some really nice uh, thing here um, and we are taking this F here and in the second half of our chord we change this F to an E and listen in. So we just changed one note, we even kept the lower bass note here. You might have noticed that the whole chord changed. Let's analyze this a little bit further. We have a an G, an A, and C, and an E inside, and a an G again. So now this chord could be like before an F major and then F major 7 chord because the E makes the uh, chord in 7th chord because um, we're starting from F 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? But now it could be in C major chord as well. We have a C, we have a G and we have an E inside and a G again and this A. So this would be in C major at 4 chord because of this A. So maybe now we are a little bit confused but so which chord is it now? Um, well, it really depends uh, on what note is played from uh, your bass. For example, if I'm going up here and playing an A, this would be an A minor 7th chord. So A, C and E makes the minor, makes the A, A minor chord and the G makes the 7th chord out of, it, out of it. Let's listen in. And we could make this a C major chord as well um, by just moving this note to an um, C and maybe I, I'm copying those notes and I'm pasting them into, well, let's take the second bass here for now. Um, so now it's more obviously what it's playing. You could even uh, cap this F like it is and it would still be in C major chord 
because the bass is playing and uh, is playing the C. Bass is still playing the C here. So if you don't know how to progress and which chord to use next is always nice to listen to your bass note and let's solo just the bass note here we have f d e c f c well it's a little bit tricky here but it's in c because the bass is playing the c so let's listen to it We could, of course, we could just take the same uh, chords here uh, like we did before. Of course, this would uh, work really nice. So, but we have another um, two notes you might have noticed, or three notes actually that are not playing the roots um, till now. So for example, the G and the A and the B. This B chord is a little bit different than other chords because it may, it's an, so we're taking the root, the third and the fifth again, but it's not a mi major and it's not a minor chord because as you can see, we have a minor th a third here followed by a minor third again. So it's not a major, major followed by a minor or a minor third followed by a major. This chord sounds totally different. Listen in. We are not taking this uh, B for now, but we could, like I said, we could, for example, use this G and this E again, and this would sound like So, but I don't like this change here, right? It sounds, uh, you already know, this is not going to work really fine uh, in this progression here, this G. Maybe uh, we just uh, switch those two notes and listen again. So we have an A. We have an C and we have an E. This makes an E minor chord. So starting from A, the third and the fifth note. Well, let's do it quickly for the G as well. So G, one, two, three, makes a B. For five, makes a D, makes a G major chord. So let's listen in. Of course, now they are really basic, so and we don't use any basic chords here in Future Bass. Let's talk about another topic, and this is called inversions. I told you this here is a basic A minor chord, A, C and E, the root, the third and the fifth. So if I'm taking this A and transposing it up an octave, it's still an A minor chord, but voiced up differently. So we're starting with the E, um, with the C, E, and then we have the A. And we, we are calling this the, the first inversion of A minor in this case. And if we uh, transpose the C up an octave again, we are starting with an E, A, and C. And we have the second inversion uh, of A minor in this case. What we can do as well is just taking this E and pitching it down, like taking this A and pitching it up, for example, we have still a basic uh, A minor chord. So we have the A, the E and the C, or the A, the C and the E, and the A again inside of this chord, but it's just voiced up differently. And this opens up the chord a bit. Now it's not so dense uh, anymore and we we can do some uh, interesting 
uh, stuff here with this card, but first uh, let's listen in how this sounds now. Now we have many possibilities to make this card more interesting. So for example, we just could add a D. In this case, we have an A, C, D, E playing. So root, third, then the fourth note, and then the, um, the E, which is the fifth, just an octave lower, right? This would make an A minor add four chord because we're adding the, the fourth degree of the scale. Yeah, let's listen in um, how this sounds. It's interesting. Um, what if we are taking this um, F here? So as you can hear, this F is not working that good. We could try out this B here as well. So we have a lot of tension here with this B inside. Um, I like it. <laughs> so, but I want to say, if you know your basic chord progression and you know how to, to invert chords and how to add tones to your chords and how to voice them up differently, you can try out different possibilities and make your chord progression sounding great and interesting. By the way, we could even try in G here. Uh, instead of in B, this would be a, an A minor a seventh chord here because this, the G um, is the seventh degree. So Let's try both of them. So both are working really nice. Another trick is to change the velocity of certain notes. So for example, this chord is sounding a little bit too dense. But we could just uh, change the velocity of this G here. It didn't change nothing and this is because our synths are not velocity sensitive. So let's do this quick. We, we used Massive here. What we have to do is here um, we have this velocity uh, button and we have to take this button and drop it into this amp of the synth. And now this, this Massive instance here is velocity sensitive. That means if you like hitting your keys really hard, it's playing this key louder and if you're playing soft, it's playing quieter. So um, I'm doing this with all those other massives playing. So I changed it and let's listen in. Now it should uh, sound differently. So we could change this chord here as well. Till now it's just a basic C major chord, C, E and G. But in the second inversion, like the first inversion would be like this, starting with C, E, G. The, the, the first inversion would be like E, G, C. And the second is uh, G, C and E. So this is the second version. And we could add here another.
this B makes this chord in B major 7 because it's the 7th degree of the C major. Why not changing the velocity of this here as well? Just to give it a little bit of this flavor. And we could make this even more interesting by, you know, the bass is still playing the C down here, um, but we could keep this F. So let's listen. In. What? So this G major chord here is a little bit too basic, maybe. Um, so let's. Add in some notes, for example, of course, the G uh, is working, so we have a nice uh, melody here going up and downstairs. And we could add even more notes. So this is a typical future bus chord. So if I deactivate this note, yeah. I, I like it this way, so let's play it again. So I hope this this wasn't uh, too confusing. If you want to go more in detail, uh, check out our course. I just wanted to show you um, Future Bass needs those big, big chords with like the sevens in there and add four chord, two chord. Those extra notes are giving those chords this future bass character. So we, we could uh, go on here for another two hours, just adding notes here, changing the velocities and stuff. But I think you get the point and we now move on to make a little melody. So what we are doing is taking all those notes here copy and then we're going down here to this vocal so now we can see um, our chords and we can start composing some nice melody um. So of course this would uh, fit already pretty uh, nicely, but like I told you, um, we are we we want to start with some tension here, and why not just dropping this note down to an E? So can you hear the difference? This is like a little bit um, too uh, too nice. And this gives it this uh, future bass character, actually. So um, <clears throat> let's analyze this a little bit. So we have this F major uh, seventh chord down here. And in our melody, we're playing two notes, the E and the D, which are not part of this chord here, actually. We widen up our range of used notes, if you can say that like this. Um, I hope you understand what I mean and, and this somehow makes it more interesting. We could try out uh, even other notes, for example the C. So the C is nice as well here, as you can hear. And maybe something like this. Okay, so this change is not working because, because with, this, with the C here, we are setting up our ears to another kind of uh, melody, another kind of mood. And so let's, um, let's uh, have it on the E here. 
So let's try out. We just we can just copy this here and uh, let's have a listen. <laughs> So as you can hear, this is working. So why is this working? This is working because the E is part of the C major and it's the third of C major. C major is C, E and G. And we are composing here in a C major scale and all those chords underneath are um, part of the C major scale. Because of that, this, this E is fitting here pretty well. We just could go down here, so playing a D, uh, which is uh, just the tonic of this chord. And here as well. Okay, and we can change something here at the end. For example, we can just uh, change those two last notes here to make it this melody a little bit more interesting and adding some variation. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't work like this, so let's try out something like, maybe something like this here. So it's not sounding good. <laughs> um, let's try some. Let's try something else. So we could uh, we we're taking this D here again. So and we could, for example, move this uh, this C up to, for example, an E, and uh, so we have some variation. We are going up here instead of down. And for example, we could do something like this. And we are deleting this last note. And we could add some more va variation. I hear something like this. Okay, and so now uh, we had we just have a basic melody, and you know you can change uh, those notes here and progress further. But uh, I just wanna uh, I just wanna uh, try something out here. I hear something like uh, this first note uh, playing uh, shorter than um, uh, the second one. <laughs> And so this is uh, this is interesting, um, but let's do it with a side chain. We can. I just preparing the side chain uh, trigger, um, so it's here 
we want to have this as our sidechain trigger. So what we are doing is copying everything. Then we are just duplicating this sidechain here and pasting in this information. And now we delete all those other nodes except this node here. And then we are going back to our vocal chain. And as you can see, this vocal chain has already a compressor on it, sidechain compressor. So, but we ca could activate even another here. And taking the input from sidechain number two. And then we're going down with our threshold and maybe release something like this. So what I'm doing here is basically um, instead of shorten these notes here, I'm letting the compressor doing this step here. So let's listen in. Okay, nice, I like it like this. We could uh, do even some pitching here inside, maybe something like this. Let's, I, I don't know how this sounds, but let's try it. I think you get a point, um, you know, play around with uh, those kind of uh, envelopes here. Um, it's by default, if you're going to envelope, it's the pitch band selected here. Yeah, you can play around with this kind of stuff to make it more interesting. So you don't have to change always the notes. Do something like this uh, compressor side chaining trick to duck certain notes earlier than others. So I hope you liked this tutorial, thumbs up if you do so, subscribe to our channel, visit us on productionmusiclives.com and hope to see you next time. Bye.